Today we will be solving this problem called minimizing coins. So consider a money system consisting of n coins. Each coin has a positive integer value and our task is to produce a sum of money x using the available coins in such a way that the number of coins is minimal. For example, if the coins are 1, 5 and 7 and the desired sum is 11, an optimal solution is 5 plus 5 plus 1, which requires 3 coins. And obviously we cannot do better than that. So the first line of our input will contain two integers, n and x, n being up to a hundred and x being up to a million, then follow n integers ranging from one to a million. And then for the output, we would have to output the minimal number of coins required. So let's go ahead to our drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So this is our example. Let's go ahead and draw a tree representing all possible choices we can take at any moment. So this is the diagram that represents this example. We're gonna start from a sum that is equal to 11 and our first choice is to return coin values either equal to 1 or to 5 or to 7. If we choose a coin that is equal to 1, we would have a sub-problem with n equals 10 this time. Otherwise, we would get a sub-problem with n equals 6 if we chose 5 and n equals 4 if we chose 7. And we would repeat this process, taking uh, all the coins that are possible. Like here, we wouldn't take 7 because 7 is larger than 6. And here, our only choice is 1. And we will go ahead and do that until we reach a zero here. If we get zero at some layer L, there is no point in going to any lower layer, say L plus D, because if we get a zero here, we would require L plus D coins to form this solution, whereas here we only required L coins. So we would stop at any layer that produces a zero. And we can recreate our answer here by following this path again. And we would get the answer that we saw in the example, namely 11 is equal to 1 plus 5 plus 5. And again, as we saw with the previous problem, we have values that repeat over and over again. There is a 5 here and a 5 here again. Also, there is a 4 here and here and here and here to mention a few so when they have whenever we have a condition like this and the answer for all these values would be the same namely the minimum number of coins to form a sum that is equal to four in this case we have to use dynamic programming to reduce our complexity and more precisely we would use memorization to store all values that we computed once so we don't have to compute them again. And the idea behind this problem is that for each node here, we would look at the nodes that we can reach and pick the one that requires the minimum number of coins to form. And the answer would simply be that value plus one because we used one coin to reach this next level. level. So for example, here we would require two coins to form 10, namely five plus five. We also require two coins to form six, namely five plus one. And we would require four coins to form four because our only choices are ones. And we would require four singles to reach zero here. So, the answer for 11 would be just the minimum of these values plus 1. And that's why the answer for 11 is 3. And as we can see here, all the values that 11 depends on are smaller than 11. So we can have a bottom-up approach for calculating these values, meaning we will start from the bottom and as we go up, we will update the minimum required for each coin. So for a sum of zero, we would require zero coins. 
and for a sum of one here we have our coins are one five and seven so using one we can go to the to this zero and that's why the answer for one would be one and the answer for two to be more precise would be the minimum of two minus one two minus five two minus seven plus one and since these are not possible the answer would be the minimum of creating one which is one plus one which is two and indeed we can make two using two coins one plus one and we would go ahead and do that for all other coins so to sum up we would start from i equals one and go all the way up to x and for each value our answer the number of coins required for i would be equal to the minimum of the number of coins required for i minus all possible coins from 1 to n so basically for each value i we will check the number of coins required for all the values i minus the given values of the coins and we only have a hundred such coins so our complexity here will be all of x because we go through all values from 1 to x times n because for each value x we check all the n coins and since x is up to a million and n is up to a hundred this is of order 10 to the 8th and it is within our threshold so we are fine now let's go ahead and check out our code so this is my program i start by reading n and x then i declare a vector of int that will store my coins of size n and i also declare a vector of int representing the number of coins required to form the sum uh, i and it is of size x plus 1 because I need to reach x and I initialize these values with infinity that I defined here as being a billion and I know that my answer will not reach a billion because in the worst case I would require a million coins of value 1 to make a sum of a million because the maximum sum I can have is a million and then I will loop through all the values from 1 to n and read the values of the coins then I will set the number of coins required to make 0 to be equal to 0 as we saw and then I will loop through all values from 1 to x included and for each value I will loop through all possible coins from 0 to n and each time if the value minus the value of the coin is greater than or equal to 0 I will update my number of coins required for this value with the value number of coins required for value minus coin j plus 1 this plus 1 as we saw because I'm gonna use this coin j and at the end I will check the value at index x of number of coins and if it is still equal to infinity that means that if it wasn't updated by any previous value then the answer will be just negative one and this would happen for example if all my coins were even say and i required a sum of seven then if i take two or four or six here i would always get odd numbers and i will never be able to reach zero so the case of impossible exists in this case so if um, my answer is still infinity I'll just print negative one otherwise I will print the value at number of coins so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye